You're listening to Larry Fedorik on News Talk 610 CKTV and online at 610CKTV.com. Joining us in studio, Christopher Bissett, who goes by the author's name, Christopher Mark Bissett, and that is your real middle name. That's my full name, yeah. You didn't just decide on some writer's name. No. Nope. This isn't a hidden message. You leave a mark, anything that, no. to do with the, the, the mythomore of this book? No, no. no. Okay. No. Uh, the book is called The Mythamore, and he'll be signing it Saturday at Chapters at uh, Fairview Mall. Do you know what time you're there? Yeah, 1 to 4. 1 to 4. All right. And you will have DVD copies of your movie there, Trade of Innocence, with Dermot Mulroney and Mira Sorvino, so right. people can pick that up as well. Yep. Now, this movie, Trade of Innocence, is based in harsh reality, human trafficking right. on, on our planet. Right. So you go from that to, would I say this is mythology? Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's uh, it's a mythological story full of allegory and symbolism. And uh, so there's stuff in there for the deep thinkers as well as people that just enjoy a good action novel. All right. Yeah. How much of you as a filmmaker works into your writing? Are you writing as a filmmaker? Like, because I mean, you're really, I mean, you're a filmmaker, so you envisioned what this would be like as a movie, I'm sure. Yeah. But are you doing that when you're writing, do you think? Yeah, I do. I, you know, it's um, as you approach this, I mean, writing a novel is a very different th- thing than writing a screenplay. And uh, I have to, it was hard for me. It was harder for me to do that than writing a movie. Um, just because. Uh, just the whole thought process, and I'm, <clears throat> I'm so much into the action present tense of a movie that when you go that, uh, you know, inside the characters' heads and stuff like that, it's a little bit different. Now uh, we don't have to reveal how old you are, but you said you had this idea for twenty years, so. Yeah. What, what did you have? Were you a kid or were you? Uh... <laughs> yeah, just a baby. <laughs> That's right. No. Um, yeah, I mean, time goes by quickly. As a matter of fact, you know, in about a month from now, to yeah, just two months from now, I'm going to be a grandfather. No. Yes. Really? Absolutely. Well, congratulations, of well, course. Thank but, you. Wow, I'm surprised. Thank I'm you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, the story itself uh, is one that follows three different timelines. Um, present day New York City, and uh, then it it goes back into this world of the Mythamore, and you uh, join this ancient quest and this journey uh, that you uh, you're kind of thrown into of this uh, boy who would become king. So, and uh, my understanding of what, because I got the New York City part and the the gargoyles, so you got me on that right away. By the way, okay, cool. They. <laughs> Anytime I even see pictures of them, they freak me out a little bit. So. Yeah, but you know, it's yeah, so interesting. I think <laughs> as some of that's come from my travels and actually even my movies and things that I've worked right. on. Because uh, um, I've heard of, uh, when I was in Thailand, I saw some of the imagery that they do, that they put up their statues and stuff like that, of their the ancient watchers and things like that. And they were very gargoyle sort of looking things. And then when I was in the Amazon... Uh, making a movie about the Yanomamo, they were talking about the Hekura, which are the demon spirits that they call to themselves. And they had that same sort of quality, same look. So I thought to myself, "There's is there a connection of all three of these? And are we entertaining that in our world today? I say, well, that's good. They're the watchers. They're good. So is this also now going back to a time, part of the timeline, going, looking back at a time that was actually more advanced than we believed it to be? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, Primeval Man was more sophisticated and more advanced than academics uh, first believed. At least that's the way the story opens with this underwater archaeologist who makes these great discoveries and then at a press conference uh, is about to disclose these discoveries. What he's found are traces of the journey of the sole survivor uh, that goes on this quest um, and he meets giants and imps and gargoyles and this great evil that trying to control his world and mankind that 
still exists and threatens my, mankind's existence today. All right. Okay. I don't, I don't know if I want to know anymore because I'm not through it all the way yet. So okay. I'm just trying to figure out now. Hold on. Hold on. Do I want to know that part? Do I want to? Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So, and, and three, when you say three timelines, do they um, well, intersect? Yes, they do. Yeah. They got to intersect. Yeah. Right? One supports the other. Yeah. 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 So, wow. And and uh, this is real. Um, well, it's it's... It's myth, it's mythology. I don't want to say Dungeons and Dragons. Look, I, I mean, I don't know. what is there a genre to describe this or just mythology? Yeah, fantasy, fantasy like, mythology. Um, yeah. you know, if you're, if you like um, Lord of the Rings or, um, I'm not putting myself with those, Lord, Lord of the Rings yeah. and um, uh, Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, C.S. Lewis. I, I received a very beautiful uh, endorsement from a uh, manager in LA he said, "Man, this this is very really, really well written. It's like a. It reminds me of C.S. Lewis, The Great Divorce." Mm. Wow. And I thought, "Wow, thank you very much." Can I quote you on that? Now uh, you ju- you mentioned Lord of the Rings uh, trilogy. Yeah. So uh, is this is this a first part? Is this a uh, yeah? Is this a story that can you can just keep following? Yeah, I uh, guess as long know, as time progresses, you can. I can't. Yeah. yeah, as a matter of fact, I I do have a second installment working in my mind. Can you see the symbol on the front and the title, the Mythamore? Look at the O, the yeah. story of O. That's going to come out. Perhaps that's the working title of my next oh, in okay. this whole thing, and that that's symbolic for something in the story, which will be revealed in the second installment. All right. So, All right. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. It'll keep you there for now. Uh, interesting. Interesting. And and again, difficult. I mean, you've had the idea, but now, uh, after all these years, you're going to force yourself to actually write the novel. Yeah. And I'm sure in your head you're going, yeah, I got the novel. Boom. But then you sit down and, and uh, the blank screen stares at you. And what was that like? Always. Uh, the blank page is always there. You know, yeah. it doesn't matter what you're writing. That's something that every writer faces. Um, you know, you just got to push through it. And uh, eventually just the cream does rise to the top. Yeah. And the good stuff comes out and that's what you what you put on paper. Well, because I've just had days, not, not a novel, but I've had days where I just can't wait to write. And it just it's, it writes itself and I can't stop. Yeah. And there's other days when I I dread it. I don't want to even approach it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, that's you're not alone. I think every writer faces that. You just have to um sit down to it and push through it. And you'll be surprised sometimes how the characters start to speak and the story takes on its own life. Yeah. Well, w- when that happens, I think that means you have a good story. <laughs> Thanks. Right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, so that you, that you can carry. So you're working on on uh, well, you're promoting this. I should say this is done, obviously. Right. I just started promoting the book because it's just come out in print, and um, so we're just. Uh, I'm just first stop is chapters here in St. Catherine's hometown, and uh, hopefully I'm supported by some good folks by from my hometown. Come out and pick up the novel, pick up a movie, meet me, say hi, and. Keep going. Encouragement. Oh, and by the way, what I'm going to do is I'd like to, I'm going to keep a little list. Now, this is just for listeners, friends of Larry. Okay. We're going to call it that. Okay. <laughs> and I'm going to keep that little list. And I'm going to say, okay, if you're a friend of Larry's and you're listening to this program and you come in and see me, I'm a friend of Larry's right. too. Okay. And then I'll, I'll put your name on that, on that list and I will buy them a, if they buy a copy of print copy of my novel, I will buy them a digital copy of that novel okay. and send it to them. Oh, isn't that nice? Thank right. you. And and I and I wanted to ask about that if there was an ebook digital copy on yeah. online that there you can is. do as well. There so. is. You can get that on Amazon. You can get that okay. you can purchase the book through Amazon and the print copy and you can also purchase the Kindle version. All right. It's the Mythamore, M-Y-T-H-A-M-O-H-R-E. But if you look up uh, Christopher Bissett, I'm sure you can find it that way yep. as well. And uh, whatever your next project is, or even in between projects, as something develops, as you get that $100,000, come back and share the story with us, will you? Awesome. I would love to, Larry. Right. It's always a pleasure coming in here. Mine. Christopher Bissett, Christopher Mark Bissett, uh, author of The Mythamore, and at Chapters Fairview, Saturday, 1 to 4.